Hey everybody, welcome back to Tavian's World of Reptiles. I hope y'all are having yet another fantastic day. As you can see today, we are joined by my own personal goddess, Artemis. This is my second to newest, well, third to newest snake in the household. Uh, look at her, she's giant. She's a big, big girl. A little bit on the obese side. I'll post some pictures of her here curled up. So you can see she has had a lot of neck rolls. My roommate likes to make fun of those neck rolls regularly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, she's a big girl. She's getting healthy. So I uh, figured today, since she's the only one in my collection who has not eaten recently, as I have her on a every six-week six diet, um, I figured I would go ahead and do her video today. So let me tell you a little bit about this girl. I found her on Craigslist. So I was browsing Craigslist. I like to torture myself on a daily basis looking at all the unwanted animals on Craigslist and all the ones I can't rescue. And this girl's post was up for a very, 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 very long time, like months on months on months. I kept seeing uh, this post of this boa up. Um, and it was about it was her stretched out. And I was just, I after a while, I was just like, what is going on? Like, why is this snake not going anywhere like i knew it wasn't just the post that was being left up um and forgotten about because you know craigslist deletes the post after about 30 after about 30 days so the post kept showing up month after month after month and so you know what after luna i you know i had taken a look at my collection and i was like uh i just don't think i want to you know I, I have a lot of boas i'm getting really boa heavy i probably don't need to get another boa not that there's anything wrong with boas but i like variety so I uh, questioned, uh, you know, not getting any more boas, and that was before, you know, I really took notice that she was on there for so long, and so finally I reached out to him, and I was just like, hey, what's happening? Like, I extended this post, I've noticed it has been up for a very long time, uh, is there a reason that you haven't, you know, rehomed her, like, are you just hesitant on doing it, or uh, are you just not getting enough people interested, so what's the story, and he, you know, he reached back, and he let me know that he really was just uh, as much as he needed to rehome her because he had, he was out of work and he didn't have time for her and but mostly he really was holding off on just handing her to anybody like he had had a few people inquire and either they didn't follow through or they didn't have enough knowledge for him to feel comfortable with sending her off with them so he turned down those that did try to follow through because they didn't have enough knowledge they didn't seem like they were prepared for such a large snake and so he didn't uh, relinquish her to their care um you know and i you know i heard that and i got to thinking about my situation where i was at and you know i had this very large enclosure that i was really just putting randomly you know i would swap out my snakes and let them have each a turn to stay in it and i but they didn't really need that space and you know i was like you know this this girl needs a home uh you know her 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 previous owners were doing going above and beyond uh, what they needed to to find her new home they literally could have just given her off to anybody and they didn't they took a lot of effort uh, to find her a good home and so you know I shared my Instagram with them I let them know about all of my snakes and all the care that they have I showed them the enclosure that I had planned for her and they seemed extremely excited about the uh, aspect of her being able to have a larger enclosure to be in they were really excited about that which tells me that she probably did not have a to sized enclosure before she was probably in this enclosure that was way too small for her um she did sit and spend a lot of time curled up she still does uh she doesn't like to move much i don't think she's gotten very much exercise in her life because she didn't have uh, adequate enclosure size so but he was very excited about her coming to this space and having such a huge enclosure um, and knew that I would be able to provide her with a good home so after months and months and months of searching for the right home he finally decided that I would be the right home for her so she came to me after being on Craigslist for almost maybe a half a year maybe even more like I I definitely feel like I've seen her way longer than a half a year ago but yeah so she was on there for a very long time but and he was just barely making it work for her apparently he she had eaten in months but she was over overweight like when i got her into her quarantine thing and i really started to look at her and saw all her neck rolls i knew that uh she just ha she had to have been overweight you know and uh she just had to have been a bit overfed 
when I, you know, did reach out to her and let him know that this is what I had come to the, you know, conclusion of, he was just like, she's not overweight, uh, he didn't understand, you know, about the neck rolls and how that's not a thing that should have been happening, um, but he also just stated that, you know, she ate jumbo rats, but could eat them, you know, he, he had seen her eat them uh, once a week, so I'm like, all right, if you if you've seen her eat them once a week that means you offered them to her once a week and that was way too much if she was on jumbo rats there's no reason she should have been eating them once a week so she's definitely a bit overweight but she's not as far off as she could be um she also already looks better she shed once uh for me since she's been here it was a huge shed if you watched one of my earlier videos you saw that um and i believe it was in my uh snakes in the night video i gave you guys a glimpse of that really big shed and uh when she first went into that shed it kind of was it caused concern for me because i actually didn't realize she was in shed because when she first got here she had some stuck eye caps and i assumed that was from a shed that had just recently happened and i got those off and you know i thought she was fine but then she started doing a wheezing really crazy wheezing sounds coming from her body um, when she breathed, uh, when she breathed deeply, like when she was touched or something like that, not always, but there was a wheeze there, and it really concerned me, and I thought immediately this had to be a respiratory infection, and I called the vet, and I scheduled a thing, but it was set out for a couple of weeks, so I just had to wait it out, but at the end of it, she ended up going into blue, and I was like, oh, well, shit, she's in shit, so maybe the wheezing was from that, because I know my reticulated python, uh, gets really wheezy during shed time. So um, I just waited it out, waited for her to finish her shedding. She ended up dropping her shed like uh, just a couple days before she would have gone to the vet. Uh, and her shed came off and the wheezing went away and she was perfectly fine. So it eased a lot <laughs> of uh, nerve for me to know that she did not have a respiratory infection because I was like, oh gosh, that's the last thing I need. Um, not that I couldn't have taken care of it, but nobody wants to have to deal with the respiratory infection with their snakes. I have yet to have to deal with a respiratory infection. I do have faith that I could deal with one when it happens. Obviously, when you own so many snakes, you have to be prepared for whatever might happen and taking whatever steps necessary. So, um, yeah, you know, she did not have to go through all that, fortunately, and she's been perfectly great. She's a sweetheart. Uh, she is a bit huffy sometimes, but, you know, that's just, it's just a bluff. She's never struck. She's never even uh, given a, you know, sign that she wants to strike. Uh, she's just a big, giant sweetheart, and I absolutely love her. And I'm so glad that I have her in my collection. You know, I really, I gotta give props to her previous owner, though. Like, really... He really went above and beyond because, you know, often I've got a couple of snakes from Craigslist, you know, and not too many of them have been that kind of experience. Usually you get a snake, you contact them, um, you say you're interested in the snake, they tell you what the price is, and then you make up a meeting point, right, and you go, you get the snake, uh, and then you leave. There's no, like, questioning you on uh, what you know about the snake, what enclosures you have planned for the snake, it's just to give me the money, I need it, and I'm gone. And you know, as much as I understand hard times, I think it's important to really take time to understand and figure out where your snake is going, where your reptile is going when you are forced to rehome them, that unfortunate situation that happens to many people, anything can happen, you know, the people get a lot of slack for it, but things happen, okay? So sometimes you have to rehome your pet. But if you're going to do that, it's, it is your job. You are required to make sure that you are sending that pet off to a home that is going to get, be a proper home for them, who's going to take care of them, who's going to give them everything they need, who knows everything they need to know about that species, and is not just doing an impulse buy where in a few months' time your snake or your reptile is going to once again be on Craigslist because you did not take the time to make sure that this family was appropriate, that this home that they were going to was fit. Um, and, and in a lot of those cases, it's because they just realized they didn't have the time for the animal. And I'm like, okay, you just got the animal a month ago. You should have known you weren't going to have time for it. Uh, which really never makes sense to me when it comes to snakes because they don't actually require as much time as people make them out to need. Like, they really don't need uh, as much interaction as, you know, people think they need. I love to give my snakes all the interaction they want uh, as, they, as, they, as I can because... They like to come out, they like to be active, but they also don't mind not being touched by us. They don't mind 
not being bothered. So if you, you know, when you're falling on times when you're working a little bit longer, a little bit more than you normally would, I don't think, I don't always think that's the best reason to give up your snake because, you know, even if you could just take 20 minutes a week to just look at your snake, observe your snake, clean your snake out, snake enclosures out, then, you know, you're doing all that you can for your snake and you don't have to rehome them and you still get to have the pleasure of raising your reptile or whatever, you know, I keep saying snake, but whatever animal you have. So I just think it really needs to be thought about before rehoming happens. I uh, really think about, is this a temporary situation for you? Uh, can you, uh, can you get through this? Is it something, are you going to regret this decision in a month's time when you're like, oh, everything's mellowed out now. I really wish I still had my animal. Really think about it before you're rehoming your animals because you know, they depend on us and, you know, they know when things change. Even reptiles who don't seem to have the sense of, like, you know, really being aware of what's happening, they do sense when an atmosphere has changed. They, they just realize when they're in a whole new environment and, and they can stress them out. So if we can avoid doing that to our animals by really thinking about whether rehoming them is necessary, then... I really think we can avoid having a lot of reptiles that are just unnecessarily placed on Craigslist because of a little bit of a hiccup in life. You know, I saw a post the other day on Facebook uh, and somebody was saying that uh, they had fallen on a little bit of hard times. They were, their check was going to be like a month late um, so they couldn't feed their snakes this month uh, or their snake, their one snake. And uh, a number of people kept saying that they need to go ahead and either foster the home out or rehome the snake. Uh, re foster the snake or rehome the snake and it just didn't make any sense to me okay um, I I've thought about fostering out my snakes because I was going to be without housing for a while I get that but I don't think you should have to rehome your snake when you fall on a time when your paycheck is going to be about a month late I think anybody who thinks who's never had to be like oh I can't feed you guys this week you'll be okay till next week or this month you'll be okay till next month like, it's, it's just been really lucky because I think in most of us in the hobby have been to the point where we've just been like, oh, dang, with everything, the bills have fallen this way, uh, I can't get food right now. Snakes can go exceptionally long periods without food. They can go months without food. In, in the wild, they're forced to. So they're not going to perish if you can't feed them this week or this month, you know? And I don't think that's a reason for people to just automatically rehome their snakes. Hiccups happen, and I think it's ridiculous for people to keep telling people when small things like that happen that they're not they're not prepared to take care of the animal anymore because hard times happen, financial situations happen. Uh, but with, I think reptiles are probably one of the few animals that can withstand that with you, that can go through that with you. You know, you can't let your dog or your cat go without food for a week. You know, things start to happen. They will get sick. They may die. Who knows? But they, animals can't go that, like that, can't go without food for a week, a week, two weeks, a month. They need food regularly. They need to have access to that food. But snakes, snakes can go long periods without food. Snakes can go through that rough period with you without you having to rehome them. It's possible. So just, you know, be considerate. Think about yourself. Think about your situation. Think about your animals when you're rehoming because, you know, they depend on us. They depend on us for everything. They depend on us for what's, what's happening in their lives right now, where their lives are going to be like tomorrow, next week, next year. So really just put a lot of thought into it and really big kudos to the man I got her from because even though he might have been power feeding her a little bit, uh, you know, that's, a, that's an innocent mistake. Yes, research should have been done, but... Power feeding can happen for somebody who's not as experienced. I think this was his only snake, so, you know, to learn from other snakes and all that is not a thing he's probably really done. That doesn't necessarily make him a terrible pet owner, because, like I said, he went above and beyond to really make sure that his baby went to a good, proper home. So, anyway, this is this is Artemis here joining us, big girl. She's, uh, she, you can see she's not as active as any of my other snakes, you know, like all the other ones would be trying to go off places. And while she is moving, she's not like hardcore trying to escape. She's a very slow mover. She really doesn't move too much. Once I put her down, if I were to put her on my bed, she'd just kind of stay there. She wouldn't move too much. She's not a huge mover. She's just too big. I have to make her move. I have to make her exercise or else she would just stay a big loaf. So, uh, you know, we're working together and, uh, 
yeah, I do also want to do a little tour of her temporary setup that I have in her larger enclosure. It is by no means what I want to have as her end uh, game here. I want it to be really nicely set up. But since I'm moving in a few weeks, there's really no point in me doing anything hardcore. But I did just want to get her out of her very tiny um, quarantine tub so that she could have a little bit more space to be uh, a little bit more stretched out. So I'll give a little tour of that, talk about it a little bit, and then I'm going to let you guys go. I don't want this video to be obnoxiously long. All right. Okay, so never mind. Scratch that plan. Uh, this light on this camera doesn't quite get in there. It's just very dark. I don't have lights inside of my enclosures. Um, I, you know, mostly because I don't really feel like they need them. I have uh, daylight that comes into the room, so that gives them that sense of day and night. But I don't really have lights in my enclosure. Also, for the just you know electricity saving purposes as well. Not that I wouldn't want them. Maybe I will in my future. But so yeah, I can't get a good uh, a good shot of the, the enclosure. So that'll happen sometime in the future, and then by then it'll be way better set up, I'm sure. So, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Hope you enjoyed meeting Artemis. I gotta hurry up and stop because my camera's gonna die, and I don't know where my charger is right now. So, all right, y'all. This is TWR checking out. I hope y'all have a fantastic day. And I'll see y'all next time. Keep loving yourself, love your family, love your loved ones, love your reptiles, and keep spreading those herbs.